Hi, it's Amanda with Music Game Club, and today I am going to help you know how to use listening lemurs to teach interval recognition with your students. So if your students have never done any ear training, you can use the game board, and then you can use the game pieces on the game board. I am not gonna do this right now to show you, but you can use these, just know that, you know, it's the same gameplay. They listen for an interval, they recognize an interval, they draw a card, and then they move along the board. So I'm not using that because I'm just gonna focus on helping you know how to teach intervallic recognition in your studio. I would start with just one deck of cards. So just the majors. And what we're gonna do, we're teaching our students to recognize this is what a major second sounds like, this is what a major third, major six, and major seven. So there's only four intervals. And so what I would do, you've got your nice little handy teacher guide here. If you don't know what intervals to play on the piano, you can use these. And also, go through this list with your students. Some teachers prefer using solfege instead of songs. So you could always do do, re, if you wanted to. Doesn't matter. Um, so whichever way, choose something to help your students recognize it. But then, all you would do is when you play this game using only the major cards, I would have my students identify which interval it is. So is it a major second, major third, major six, major seventh. And they might be able to just hear and identify it, but you might want to do the little song trigger. So like, I would do baby shark, you know, baby. That's a really popular one. They probably would get that one. Um, for a major six, it came. For it came upon a midnight clear. Talk with your students, see what they prefer. Or you could just do solfege. It doesn't matter. So what I would do is play an interval, mix them up, and have the student identify that's a major six or whatever they think it is. Hopefully they get it correct, that's major six. And then major second. So I would play the entire game with just ascending major intervals, having them recognize it. Then, once that gameplay is done and they're doing really well with the recognizing major seconds, major thirds, major sixths, and major sevenths, then I would do descending. And first I would play it for them. And you can talk about if there's any tunes that you want them to know or do the solfege, whatever you're doing, and then play the entire game going through. That's a major third. You draw a card, you move forward, whatever the card says to do. Play the entire game that way. Then I would mix them up and do ascending majors and descending majors. So that's a ascending major six. And they don't necessarily have to say ascending. They could just say, oh, that's a major six. That's a major third. So once they go through that, that's three game plays to take them through the major. Major ascending, major descending, major ascending and descending. And if your student needs to stay there for a while, that's okay. Teach them that and then once they're really comfortable with that, I would probably do the perfect intervals next. So and some teachers might actually want to start with perfect intervals. It doesn't really matter the order in which you teach them. Perfects are pretty easy. <laughs> There's only two pitches that are tr harder to do because perfect unison, <laughs> super easy and then perfect octave and then you have your perfect four and your perfect fifth and you can work with your students like we talked about in the major intervals where they could do a little tune or you could talk solfege doesn't matter but do it the same way and some students might be able to pick up on perfect a lot faster since there's only the perfect fourth and perfect fifth, really, because the other ones are perfect unison and perfect octave, super easy to listen for. So you might be able to cut some uh, corners with this one and do ascending and descending at the same time. But again, don't rush your student, just take it at their pace and work with them. If they need to do one gameplay of ascending perfect intervals and a gameplay of descending perfect intervals and then a gameplay of mixed, then you could do that. So if you have already taught the majors and then you're teaching the perfects next, once you've done that, then I would mix up both of these. So this is where it's getting a little bit trickier. They, first of all, they just had to say, oh, that's a major third, that's a major six, 
that's a perfect fourth, that's a perfect unison. Well now they have to figure out is it perfect or is it major? And they have to work between the two of them. So this is gradually making it a little trickier for them. So you could do a gameplay like that. Again, if you need to separate and do just ascending intervals and then just descending intervals and then mixed up, you can. A lot of it just depends on the student and how quickly they pick up with their ear training. Finally, I would teach the minors. And this is the same as the others. You would do the minor second, minor third, minor sixth, minor seventh. Again, you can pick a tune, you could do solfege if you wanted to, and work on it ascending, work on it descending, work on it mixed, and then combine all three. Do minor, perfect, and major. Now, if your student is a little bit hesitant and like they can't get all of them, it's too much too soon, maybe take out the perfect and do major and minor because these are all dealing with seconds, thirds, sixths, and sevenths. So if you wanted to, you could do that. So there's several different ways you can play this. You can play it with just one deck of cards and they have to identify, oh, that's a minor third, that's a minor seventh. You can play it with two decks of cards and you could still do it where they have to identify the quality and the interval. That's a major six, that's a minor third. Or you could just, if you wanted them to say, oh, that's, that's major, that's minor. And then you can graduate to the three. Okay, so it's very versatile. You can use this to teach your students intervals if they've never learned them before. You, you could use this to review intervals if your students technically know their intervals but are a little shaky on them. And just do it in a way that really builds your students' confidence. So if you're just doing the majors and they get to win the game, then that's like, they're learning even though it seems like as a teacher, like, oh, well, I want them to know the major and the minor and the perfect they are still learning and you have to sometimes break it into the smallest little bit for them to learn and to really grasp it. So if a student stays on major intervals for a month, that's okay. And then if you can introduce the minor intervals and if they have to stay on that for a month and then maybe you introduce the perfects and they start getting confused so you can back off, that's okay too. I just highly recommend trying ear training because that was something I didn't have as a piano student until I was in my 20s, I think. And I had an advantage because I was a singer and I could sight sing. It's really crazy. I could sight sing even though I didn't know soulfish. <laughs> I don't know how I did it because I also do not have perfect pitch. But I have noticed a, a big difference in my playing. Uh, part of ear training is to help them to recognize, oh, they played something and they played it wrong. And so when they, when they do ear, intervallic ear training, it just helps strengthen their ear. It helps them to listen more closely to music and hopefully it would help them just become better rounded as a musician. So I hope you enjoy playing listening lemurs with your students and if you have fun playing it, if you take pictures, tag us at Music Game Club on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and I think even YouTube now and let us celebrate with you because we love hearing and seeing what your students are doing and how they're learning with Music Game Club games.